Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to a very special edition of the show. We've got on the Zoom line from the Flower Kings and Transatlantic, formerly of Kaipa, none other than Royna Stolt. Royna, welcome to Sea of Tranquilities. Thank you. So, uh, Royna, I don't know if you, we actually met a couple times many years ago. We met at Nearfest once, and then uh, when the Flower Kings played at the New Jersey Prague House, we also uh, spent a little bit of time there. But that's uh, quite a while ago. I mean, that's, uh, what, 10, 15 years ago, I think, something like that. Must, must have been, yeah, 10, 10 years. Uh, or um, did you say Nearfest? Yeah, Near Nearfest. Fest? So Nearfest was probably like 2002 or three. Is that when you played there? I'm yeah, could remember. have been, could have been, yeah. When, yeah. uh, we had the big band with uh, with Daniel Gildenlev and Hasse Brunison. Yes, that one. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think Camel played the same night or yep. or the same near. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then I remember. See, <laughs> 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 I'm not that old. Well, I'm very old, but I I, I still remember that one. Yeah. There you go. Our <laughs> memories are working good. That's good. That's good. So uh, you know, we got uh, Roy on the show today because, of course, we want to talk about the brand new Flower Kings album, which I'm uh, actually showing right now, which is called Islands on Inside Out Music, brand new double album. So uh, the album was released just under a year after Waiting for Miracles, which, uh, you know, a short span of time, but due to COVID-19, the band had to record this album with everybody contributing from their own homes and home studios. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how that process worked? Was that very difficult to put this album together based on the limitations due to the pandemic uh, and, uh, you know, did that change the way the album, maybe the way you originally envisioned the album? Did that did that whole situation change how Islands turned out at all? Uh, well, I think actually it's, well, this is something that we have done before, you know, because uh, just about every band that I've been in, I think all, although the very first version of Flower Kings, we were actually from the same town. So that, that would be like Hasse, me and Thomas Bodin and uh, Michael, my brother on bass. And, uh, and then we had the drummer coming from the south of Sweden, but that was easy. So he, every time we were rehearsing or, or recording something, he had to come here, you know, but that was one guy. But now just about every band, I mean, Transatlantic, we have two guys in America, one guy in England and, and me here in Sweden. And the Sea Within, the same thing. Tom Brislin from America, Marco Miniman, California, <laughs> and Jonas Rangel that now resides in Austria, you know, and um, Daniel Gildenlev and, and uh, 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 Casey McPherson, USA, yes. of course. Yep. So it's, it's, I mean, I have a history of making albums with people from different continents. So I mean, look, just looking at the Flower Kings, yes, we have tried to the last 20 years to actually get together in a studio to record or to track the backing tracks and work out the songs uh, together in a studio. So, yes, it was different in a way, but at the same time, there's so much work that has been done uh, sending files back and forth, you know, and, and the way you can do it today. I mean, there was a time when you, if you were working with someone uh, that was living far away from here, you know, living in California, then you had to actually send reel to reel tapes. <laughs> and that's kind of a dangerous business, you know, sending away stuff, original tapes. But nowadays you can send files. So I would say, the technical aspects of uh, doing an album like this, uh, I think, is not um, uh, the, the, the problem or the big problem. I think the, the thing that you would uh, like to do different is you would actually like to get together in the same room. You have a coffee, have a talk about the songs uh, when someone is, is tracking a piano or someone is tracking drums you can be you know there in the same studio in the same room and you can talk about it and you can give advice and uh, sure. discuss the music so um, i think um, that's the big difference but um, uh, and, and also this time since not everyone has like a experience of recording themselves you know um, to up to the standard then 
of course, for me was a little bit of, of you know, giving advice to Mirko, who was tracking the drums in, in Italy. And uh, he has a studio, a small rehearsal studio, but he, he was just starting to build up, you know, more, more like a professional, I would say, with professional microphones and sound interfaces and stuff like that, and didn't have the... Uh, I would say the the longer experience of, of tracking drums on his own and, and making that up to professional standards. So I had to assist him, you know, via emails and via Skype and stuff like that. And uh, I mean, in the end, of course, we had lots of time because sure. yeah. the, the way things turned out this year, you know, with no gigs and every, everything is folding down and and uh, what else can we do? And that's also one of the reasons why we started working on an album uh, at, at the time, you know, in March, I think. Uh, the initial plan was probably to start sometime late summer, you know, writing songs and, and working on a new album. So uh, everything, uh, everything changed with the Corona uh, came into play and and we had to just find a way to be, you know, uh, you know, use the time we had wisely, you know, and be be productive and be creative with what we had. Yeah. So it sounds to me like almost like business as usual for you guys, although, you know, miss, missing the personal touch, obviously, of being all together. But uh, I think because of Corona, you were able to actually get this this new project, this new album finished a little bit earlier. And, uh, you know, and it sounds to me like based on listening to this album and, and the previous album, I think the current lineup is gelling really well together. Um, so how is it like, so Zach is, is fairly new to the band. So how is Zach like uh, finding a good home in the Flower Kings now is his uh, style and that he brings to the table. Is that all kind of meshing really well with the rest of the guys? Yeah, definitely. I mean, him, him and, uh, and Mirko, the drummer, they came in at the exact same time, you know. Uh, but I've known Zach for about 10 years because the first time he contacted me 10 years ago to, or even more than 10 years, maybe 12 years ago, he contacted me uh, to see if I could produce an album with his, uh, his own band, An Endless Sporadic. And I said, yeah, I could do that. Uh, the condition is that you come to Sweden. And I think he actually, he wanted to come to Sweden and meet me. <laughs> so I said, yeah, we, we can do that. And um, at the time Jonas had a studio in the South of Sweden, uh, like a small, uh, more like a demo studio. So Zach came here with his then drummer, uh, Andy. And uh, so I produced uh, the Endless Sporadic album. So we've known each other for a, a very long time. And, and Mirko was someone that I got to know about three years ago, I think, yeah. uh, basically through the internet and we were connecting and uh, he was playing drums and stuff. And, you know, we were just, you know, connecting through Facebook, I think. Uh, but, but Zach, uh, I've known for, for 10 or 12 years and, and you know, we've been in co contact uh, now and then, I think, uh, and uh, even after that album that I produced, I think I played guitar and some other stuff he, he, he produced and, uh, and recorded. And um, uh, also um, I remember when I was in, in the United States with Steve Hackett touring, uh, we met up a couple of times, you know, on shows and stuff like that. So uh, Zach actually came in because he saw on, on the internet that there were plans for the Flower Kings to play again in, I think uh, at the time, the first thing we did was uh, a tour in South America. So the word got out uh, and uh, he probably saw that and, and he offered his <laughs> services his, as the second keyboardist. He said, I can be the second. I, I know your music so well. I can I can be the second keyboardist. And frankly, I didn't know him as a keyboard player because when I produced uh, the and the sporadic album, he was mainly playing guitar. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that I saw him more like a guitar player, you know, and and songwriter. And uh, and of course, we also met on the 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 latest cruise to the edge, I think, and possibly on the Progressive Nation. I can't remember now, but we met many many times. But I saw him as a 
as a guitar player, you know. But he said, yeah, I play keyboard too, and I think I can, I can learn the Flower King songs. Uh, so I just asked him to, to, you know, learn a few, like whatever, five or 10 minutes of The Truth Will Set You Free or something like that. And, you know, to see <laughs> if he could actually play it. So he sent me stuff and it sounded great. So I said, yeah, wow, I didn't know that. You, you play great keyboards, you know, and great sounds and everything. And you covered all the detail, the tiny little details. That I think even Thomas didn't cover. So, yeah. And it was good because I knew him uh, from many years ago. So I knew he was a nice guy. And, uh, you know, we have, you know, have the same kind of humor and, you know, he's... Uh, He's, he's easy to be around. So I think that's very important also when you're touring that uh, you have people around you that make you smile, you know, and, and uh, yeah, so that's how that came about. And, uh, and now we, we've been touring and, and playing and recording for two, 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 and a, two, two and a half years, I think. Sure. So let's go back a few years. So uh, after you released uh, Desolation Rose in 2013, you kind of took a little break from the band and put the band on the back burner. Um, was that more a decision just to kind of take a break after, you know, 20 plus years of constant album tour for the Flower Kings type of thing? Or was it because you, know, you had a lot of other projects you were working on and any reason for the little breather there from the Flower Kings for a couple of years? I think it was probably a combination of, of, of both. I think it was, yes, I think mainly because we've been going for a very, very long time and releasing yeah. many, many albums. And it kind of felt that we were not being as creative as I thought we should be, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And we a little bit sort of lost the creativity and the and the wild styles and rides we did in the beginning, you know, and and every, everything turned out to be more conform and, and more calculated, uh, sure. if I dare say so. And also I felt that maybe the uh, commitment or the heart wasn't in there all the time, you know. So it just felt like I was running a business that uh, half the band didn't care much about. So I think that's the, if you put in so much time, it's it's kind of heartbreaking to see that all the time you put in is not uh, sort of uh, appreciated the, the way it should be. I think so. So I think that's that's one of the reasons I felt that maybe I just stop now and tell the guys that we take a break for whatever, a uh, couple of years or forever, <laughs> whatever, uh, and. Because I frankly, I didn't know. I, it didn't feel like we should just go on and make albums uh, or touring just for the sake of touring or bringing in the money or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, that happened, you know, and I felt quite good about being like um, sort of a free agent again and uh, <laughs> I could do whatever I wanted. And I, uh, I got the offer to, to tour for about a year with Steve Hackett almost a hundred shows. And uh, in, in the middle of all that, I also got the offer to do the album with John Anderson. Yeah. So I was in a, a, in a happy place, you know, for a couple of years there. And, uh, and then I think this thing with the Flower Kings just came up. We had an offer from a promoter in South America. So just out of the blue, this came up and, and I said, I don't even have a band, but of, of course I can, I can come down to South America and I can put together a band, you know, and we can play Flower Kings music, but it's not the Flower Kings. And they were okay with that. So, so that's how it started again, you know, and I contacted uh, Hasse, of course, and Jonas, and then we got Mirko and Zach in. And, uh, you know, it felt, felt good. So that's the reason we continued. There you go. Yeah. I got to say, I, I can remember a few years ago going to see Steve Hackett here in New York, because I'm from New York, Yeah, okay. sitting in the audience and the band comes out on stage and I look all the way over on the right hand side of the stage. I'm like, wait a second. 
that's Roy Nestalt playing bass over there. And I like, I, mm -hmm. I tap my buddy and I'm like, that's Royna from the Flower Kings. I had no idea. I mean, you guys kept that pretty quiet because I, I don't remember hearing about that at all. And I thought it was, it was just great seeing you up there with Steve Hackett and all those other musicians. I mean, it was a really magical show. So uh, I, I, I'm not surprised you jumped at the opportunity to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I did. I did. It, it, was, it was one of those weird afternoons because I think, um, I can't remember in what order, Pro probably I think I talked to John Anderson he called me uh, in the afternoon uh, and, and about two hours later, Steve Hackett called me. Wow. Oh, yeah. And I was, I was, when I, when I finished that phone call, I was thinking, wow, what, what a strange day, you know, first the, the single from Yes called me. And of course we were already working on the album, but still there's John Anderson, Anderson calling me, you know, and, and then Steve Hackett is calling and asking me to come out with him and play old Genesis music. Yeah. Said, wow, that's that's a weird day, you know. That is a weird day. <laughs> a connection with the with the past and my my youth and my teenage years listening to, you know, whatever topographic oceans or or selling England by the pound. So that was mm -hmm. kind of a surreal moment actually. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, um that 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 was uh, I I do understand that uh, because I mean normally uh, when it comes to Steve Hackett it's mostly uh, Steve Hackett is Steve Hackett and he's the poster boy. So, so normally the, the band isn't sort of on the poster on, or on the bill uh, they're, they're presented. And I, I mean, I got treated really well. I mean, it was a pleasure playing with, uh, with Steve. Uh, and I love, of course, playing all those favorite songs in particular from Lamb Lies Down and, and Selling England or, or, uh, or uh, Foxtrot. We played Foxtrot, I think. And uh, maybe there may have been something from Nursery Crime. So that, that's, and, and also Voyage from the Acolyte. So that's exactly, I came in at the exact same uh, perfect, I, I would say the perfect moment for me, because that's the exact uh, uh, era of, of Genesis and Steve Hackett music that I like the most. Right, right. So th that was kind of a, a miracle for me because I mean, there's, I'm, I mean, I like everything. I like everything, but I, in particular, I like uh, uh, Steve Hackett's first few solo albums, and I, I like, of course, from Nursery Crime up to, I would say, possibly Trick of a Tailor, Wind and Wuthering, you know. Right. Well, so all the classic was, stuff, yep. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. definitely. Yeah. So back, uh, back to Islands. Um, so it's another double album, which, uh, you know, you guys are pretty good at putting together double albums. You, you have a few of them under your belt, right? Yeah. Um, but here it's it's more of, it's two, it's a double album set, but it's more a collection of, of shorter songs. Mm -hmm. um, so how hard was it for you this time around not to, you know, put forth a whole bunch of like big epic tracks instead kind of create, you know, close to 90 minutes worth of music all comprised of shorter songs. Was that any easier or any harder for you? Uh, it wasn't, to be honest, it wasn't much difference uh, because in reality, I mean, looking from the inside, you have to understand that uh, an album like uh, Flower Power, which is uh, a loved album by many, many fans. And um, uh, if you look at uh, Garden of Dreams, that is the big song on that one. Sure. Garden of Dreams is actually pretty much the same as we did this time. Garden of Dreams was probably 15 or 20 songs that we put together, together yeah, yeah. In, in Garden of Dreams as one song, you know. So whatever there was like a synth chord or there was a bass and drum uh, ringing out and then uh, the piano starts, it's the same thing. The difference we did this time that we actually named the, and they had the in, their own index numbers, you know. Uh, and uh, I don't know why we did that. It was probably something I wanted to try to just have the song separated uh, so you can actually listen to, to them that I think actually most people will do. They will listen to at least one CD at a time. Um, and then I think it, it has the same effect as if you're listening to Garden of Dreams or, I mean, there's other songs too, like Start As We Are or, or um, the truth will set you free in, in some respect. I think there are different sections that we just glued together. 
into whatever a 30 minute song or a 40 minute song. And, uh, and this time we did glue them together carefully. Uh, so if you listen to the album, you can hear that it fades out and then fades in. And some places it, it doesn't fade out or fade in. It's just like it's, um, it, it's a new song starting, you know. Right. But you can hear sometimes a melody coming up from one song and then it's entering into another song 10 or 15 minutes later, you know. There's even lyric uh, lyrics, phrases that sort of comes back and uh, small riffs and things that um, that we sort of uh, sprinkled out over the, the album, you know, and like almost like Easter eggs, you know, for, right. for anyone who's li listening uh, many, many times, they will sort of discover these little Easter eggs, you know. So so it's just a different way of doing it. And uh, in my in my mind, it's a really just a different way of doing an epic, you know. It, this is the epic. I mean, Islands is the epic, but we have we have these songs as separated songs with different names and different indexes. Sure. Do you have any uh, Do you have any favorite tracks on the album? And uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about some of the lyrical themes that are going on throughout Islands. Well, uh, starting with the lyrical themes, I think. Um, the reason the album is called Islands is because based on the, the term isolation mm -hmm. and in the sense that an island is isolated from, from the land, if you know what I mean, by sea, but we're, we're not uh, separated by sea, we're separated by, in this very special time, by, by the COVID-19. So uh, it has a bit of that, uh, that element to it, but uh, I would say Island, islands is, um, I mean, it could be, the isolation could be uh, coming from, from many different places. I mean, my, the way we, I mean, just like we're doing now, we're, we're on the computer, you know, talking to each other, you know, and, and you used to talk on the telephone. That's how we started doing interviews. Uh, not saying that this is any, any, I mean, it, it works, it, it's fine. But I mean, th I think people spend many, many hours a day now in front of the computer, in front of their, their telephone, of course, or their, their iPad or whatever, you know, that's the way we communicate. We, we put up stuff, you know, on, on Instagram and Twitter and we, we wait for the reaction. Uh, and uh, it's, in a way, it's a strange time, you know. There was a time when you you wanted to talk to a friend, you called a friend on on the telephone, or you, know, right. you you just got got in your car or or got on the bus and you went there, you know, and you ringed his doorbell or her doorbell and and had a coffee. But nowadays, it seems like we're in front of a screen, you know, isolated in a in a strange way, you know. It has, I uh, think, it's it's um, there's some good and there's some bad, you know coming out of, of all this but um, uh, so that's one for, form of isolation you know and uh, and uh, of course because of the COVID now we're in a, a very specific situation where we actually cannot uh, sometimes even visit our relatives you know I, I ended up in a situation where I, I had my mother on a, a, a retirement home so to speak mm -hmm. And she actually died in, in COVID uh, this year in March. Yeah. And um, very sorry to hear that. So, yeah. So that's, that's, that's a reality, you know, that's reality in Sweden or in, in Japan or in, in South America or in, in Italy or wherever, you know. And, uh, and I, I talk quite a bit about this <laughs> with my wife and, and, you know, the situation as it is. Uh, and it can happen to anyone, and uh, it's just we we just have to to accept the 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 way the world is right now is a is a kind of a scary uh, moment in our lives, but we have to just you know I think uh, move on and do the best we can, and uh, and uh, this is. Uh, for us, this is something I, I, I talked to my wife today and, and we said, how can anyone 
possibly have known this just about a year ago because about a year ago i was just about to i think we were rehearsing to go out on a european tour with the flower kings and um, so it's a different time but now we're in this very strange time and and we're we're getting isolated and and um, and we we don't want this we, we don't know the answer to when when will this come back to normal so yeah definitely so i think i mean there's uh, the sort of the, the ghost of isolation is all over the album and in different in, in different uh, topics i mean in in the lyrics but also the way the album was conceived you know the way we made the album so it we, for us as a band we will always remember this album as a special album because we sold your own and we did the album and it has the the mark of the the covid and it has the mark of the isolation yeah. <clears throat> on it. So, so and i think yeah. too you know uh, and i was very surprised when i got it to see this i, I you know I, I get the CD in the mail and lo and behold, there is this spectacular artwork from Roger Dean, none other than Roger oh. Dean, and here with these floating islands, right? Again, back to the idea of isolation and on one of the islands here, you have five individuals, right? And, and I'm showing everybody the cover here now. So, oh. you know, how cool was it to get Roger Dean to work with you on this and to, in my opinion, perfectly convey everything that you just said in the art that adorns the album yeah and that's that's uh that's scary i i i wouldn't say i i totally believe in the supernatural but i think it was kind of meant to be and and i i tell you why <laughs> because uh, frankly we were so i was deep into uh starting the mix of the album we had finished all the overdubs and i was starting the mix and then we sort of panicked because there was no artwork and the record label was asking, oh, so do you have the artwork? Can we start working on it? And I said, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't have anything. And I felt I probably shouldn't go with Silas that has done, the, you know, the Anderson Stolt and some Aliens of Mercy and some Flower Kings. So maybe we should try something new. And then the record label said, why don't you talk to Roger Dean? And that, I, I don't know why, but that that idea didn't enter my mind you know to even ask roger dean i probably because i felt that roger is so connected with yes and yes music and everything you know steve howe and all that so but then okay so that this seemed like the record label was keen on that um, for obvious reasons uh and and when i mentioned to the band members they said yeah 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 that's great <laughs> let's see what roger dean has <laughs> So I sort of, yeah, okay, oh, well, I, 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 we can talk to him and see what he has. And then Roger sent me a mail and he said, well, I'm working on two things right now and maybe one of them could. So he sent me over to JPEGs, I think, and it was just like sketches. And he said, oh, here's, here's one. And that was kind of a little bit darker. And then he had this one that he called Island Ferry. And I was just, I just stopped and said, Island Ferry, this is, this is spooky, you know, because it's perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we just decided that we call the album Islands and he had this, you know, and he had this, I, I don't know if that was actually five figures on, on this one, on the, on this plateau, you know, or that's something he put in later I, I don't even remember what the first draft looked like but it was just so scary that he had something that was called island ferry and i said we, we're going to call the album islands yeah despite the fact that there's a king crimson album called islands you know from right. whatever 71 or something i think the other band members in flower kings they didn't they weren't even aware of, of the fact that there was a king crimson album called islands and uh, and our record label didn't seem to to care either so anyway and uh, yeah and it was just the more i looked at it i just felt like well this is this is meant to be you know this is probably meant to be and uh, and then i think roger took about a week or 10 days to finish the painting and uh, and this is what you see and yeah. it yeah it, it it's brought perfect. you guys together yeah absolutely yeah yeah absolutely. So very cool. So uh, so in addition to all this, we've heard just over the last week or so, 
uh, news about the new Transatlantic album, which is going to come out in early 2021. Uh, not a lot of uh, information about the music and whatnot, but we've you know we've heard about all these different versions that will come out. So there's yeah. going to be a double disc set. There's going to be a single CD release, which is going to have slightly different versions of what you have mm -hmm. on the double disc set. There's going to be um, a version that's got like LPs and you know all sorts of stuff. So pretty exciting. I know Transatlantic has a lot of fans and it's been a while since we've seen uh, a new Transatlantic release. So any little bit of information you have about the upcoming album? Uh, I'm not sure what I actually can uh, tell right now. Uh, I can tell that we started working on the album uh, September uh, or we got together September last year. So that's, uh, that's, that's more than a year ago. Uh, to start writing and uh, and doing uh, backing tracks and stuff, uh, and then uh, it's been put on hold uh, because we've been doing other things. We've been out touring. I think they they've been out with Flying Colors and maybe with Neil Moore's band and uh, possibly Marillion. I would guess. Uh, so uh, it's it's been put on hold, and then we uh, sort of. You know, we got it up to speed again and, and listening and then uh, evaluating what we had and then uh, lots of discussions, as always, with Transatlantic. And and uh, end of the discussion, we came to the conclusion that let's make two albums <laughs> or actually three albums. Why not, well, right? <laughs> well, well, one, one single album that is sort of slimmed down. Uh, in, in, in many uh, aspects slimmed down and then one uh, full bloated uh, uh, <laughs> mastodont of, a, of an album actually. Um, so more of everything as I, <laughs> as I usually say, let's have more of everything. Sure. Uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's two albums and uh, uh, great artwork. I think that most people have seen by now. Um, um, and what else can I tell? Um, yeah, I mean, it's great music. Everyone is singing, everyone is writing and uh, everyone is involved. And uh, we try to cover, cover many styles as, as usual, but I think most people will probably feel at home with what they're gonna hear. So it's, I wouldn't say there's no big surprises. There's a few little things, but I think for anyone who loved the uh, the previous albums, they will definitely love this. It's um, uh, I don't know what to, to say really. Uh, for those who fear, uh, I'm, I'm saying this with <laughs> with utmost respect. But for those who fear it's going to be a very Christian album, uh, that's not the case. So I think whatever you find. Uh, troubling or difficult with taking in the Christian lyrics, uh, you don't have to fear that because it's, I think it's um, actually, I think it's, uh, it's, I mean, the way it, the way we sort of put in the possible messages is very subtle. It's, it's, it, it's there, but I think it's, um, I think, I mean, there's, uh, in the music, in the way, in the arrangement, everything is, typical transatlantic it's high energy there's lots of great ballad stuff there's acoustic stuff there's some quirky riffing and uh, there's some high energy so i think whatever as a transatlantic fan whatever you're looking for i think it's there definitely mm -hmm. and the sound quality to my uh <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say my expertise, but uh, I think actually the the sound of this album is, to my liking, I would say, is definitely the the most um, the the good sounding album we've done up to this point. I think the dynamics and everything. If you play it uh, on a good sound system, uh, you can crank the volume up and it really start moving air, and you know it's lots of great energy in there. You know, good. I think um, most people know what to expect from a transatlantic album and most people usually are not disappointed so it sounds like uh if you've been waiting you'll like what you're going to hear I, I have to say i love your term mastodon 
Um, yeah. I may have to steal that from you. I'll give you full credit every time I use it. Okay. Great term. Five five percent. Five percent. That's that sounds about right. We can do. That. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so in closing here today, so so you've been active on the music scene and you know in on the prog scene now since the seventies with Kaipa. Um, so kind of in closing today, could you talk a little bit about how much, how different it is to be a creator of music today as compared to, you know, 1977, for instance? I mean, has it, is it still essentially the same type of thing or with the, you know, all the different technology and all that, has it drastically changed music so much that for you, it's like a different beast looking at 1977 as opposed to 2020. Um, is there anything the same or is it mostly the mm -hmm. whole music world is just completely different now? Well, the music world is definitely different, I have to say. Uh, it's, it's difficult for me to tell really the differences uh, in the sense that uh, you have to remember that when I started out as a professional, I was actually 17, I think. Right. right. Uh, so, I mean, looking at it now, 17, uh, when you're 17, you think you've grown up. But um, when oh. I'm looking at the 17 year old now, I think, oh, these are kids, you know, they, they know nothing. At 17, but, we know it. We know everything. We're ready. To yeah, exactly. And now, now I know that I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very sad. Yeah. No, actually. Um, so I think I started out very blue eyed, you know, just happy to be in the music business, you know, and we got a record deal with Decca, you know, and I said, oh, that's the same record label as Rolling Stones, you know, and here we are, you know, making our first album and, and it was magical, but, and then you go on and then you make more albums and then you get a little bit jaded, you know, and touring and everything. And then you start looking for different things, you know, be creative in other ways. And, and I mean, here I am now, and I think I probably made, I, can, I haven't counted, but possibly over 200 uh, recordings, I think, or records, albums. Uh, so it's crazy with all these bands in over the years. Yeah. And uh, it would be easy to think that uh, it's sort of, uh, it, it sort of lost its, uh, I don't know, its sheen or its, its, uh, its I mean, the, the way it was, uh, it has changed. The music, the music, um, I would say the, the the scene has the scene has changed in a way. But I haven't. If I look inside, I haven't changed that much, right. because w when I walk on stage, I'm I'm the same guy as I was when I was 17. I have my guitar, I have my amp, I have my pedals. I try to listen to the other guys. I try to enjoy the the. The company of the other musicians. I try to enjoy the energy coming from the audience. Uh, I try to enjoy the traveling, you know, coming to different cities and going uh, downtown or watching the the art architecture, or whatever you know. What, what you do when you have a free afternoon, you know, go go have a coffee somewhere, you know, and look at somewhere in Germany or in in Sao Paulo or whatever, you know. So it's it's great to be a touring musician. I love it. I love to be in the recording studio. Recording studio is probably the place where things have changed the most. Because as, as, as I mentioned, I mean, there was a time when you recorded reel to reel, you know, and you couldn't really go on doing too many takes to reel to reel, you know, because uh, that, I mean, just, just the way it is, you know. Now we have the digital technology, uh, just about everything is is diff different uh, in that sense, you know. And then you can have your own uh, studios at home, uh, and you can record whatever 250 channels of sounds. You know, you can make uh, 46 guitar solos if you want. I don't do that. <laughs> I, I don't do that anymore. I used to do many many different takes, but I don't. I try to be spontaneous, but. It is indeed a very, very, with high quality, you can actually record an album at home. So I think that's the big difference, you know. And the other big difference is, of course, the, the I mean, all the uh, technicalis, technicalities of touring, you know. Uh, I mean, when we when I started playing with Kaipa, we, it was just four guys. And we went out and we carried the equipment. We, we did uh, all the finances. We we had a bus and uh, the equipment, and we just you know 
we're touring around and carrying our own and then we got crew in and then the crew is, is growing and you have a sound guy and and suddenly you're you're finding yourself touring around with many many different people and people who sell merchandise and you know it's growing and and so many people on the payroll so to even do and, and even flying i mean to even start doing a tour it's you got to have money this sure. i mean someone who doesn't have money can tour it's impossible you can't i mean you can't go down to south america you can't go to japan you got to have the money or you got to be offered the money enough to to be able to to tour so that's i, that, I think that is the big difference and everything's gotten more complicated everything that's around the actual playing or the actual recording of music has gotten incredibly uh, and and now i mean for certain things we have lawyers you know we have people doing the paperwork because we can't even read through the the contracts because there's like 46 pages of, <laughs> of contracts that you need to read through you know yeah. so you need you need to pay people to to read these contracts it's, it's crazy it's a crazy world yeah it's the but business I, side I, of it that's really changed um i think yeah but i mean i'm i'm the same yeah i'm the same and i right. i'm the happiest when i just can go grab my guitar put on my amp and and dial in my favorite sound and play with my friends and and i don't think in 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 dollars or kroner or, or pounds or anything i mean the money isn't there you know yeah, yeah. and it, it it's and i have to say that that was lovely to work with john anderson who is uh, as you know a uh, 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 kind of a <laughs> famous and a little a bit. person that <laughs> sold millions and millions and millions yeah. But I think during all the work we did on the album, we never talked about money. He never mentioned money. And that was so liberating to, have, to, to meet someone, because even the musicians coming in now and, and people that you're working with, you know, uh, uh, or, or engineers or whatever, you know, uh, they start talking money almost immediately. Immediately, yeah. Yeah, they negotiating money and... And, and working with John, we didn't even talk. We talked about the music. And, and when that was done, then we did a deal, you know, and we did a good deal. But that was so liberating to find someone that's been so long in the business. And is, I wouldn't say he's not money driven. I, I don't know, but it was anyway, very <laughs> liberating to not talk at all about money. We just talked about the music. The music was the priority from day one until we finished the album. That's good to hear. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's all about the creation, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's pretty much where I am now yeah. also. I mean, money is, I, I don't count my money. I have money, but it doesn't matter. A normal day for me, it's about creating, you know. I, I, I see um, if I can come up with something that I can use later, you know, I, a melody, uh, some lyrics, uh, uh, orchestration, whatever, you know. And that's what I'm living for. I mean, my family, of course, but I mean, I'm, I'm creating every day. So I'm, I, I'm working about, about, well, seven days. I don't have, I have a Sunday, of course, I have a Sunday, but I, I, don't, I don't take time off, really. I, I, I do vacations uh, occasionally now and then and, and travel somewhere, you know, to, to see the sun. But, but other than that, my life is work. Yeah. I'm pretty much like anyone, like Frank Zappa. I mean, they worked all the time. Paul McCartney. These people work. Bruce Springsteen. They they're not slackers. They they work, you know, and they work hard for their money. So yeah, I... so it's it's and and it's it's lovely to be able to to work with what you love and and to be able to be creative every day and and be curious, you know, to think about next week, next month, next year and see something on the horizon that you can possibly create uh, what's coming up next. So, so there's always going to be next album and, and you dream about the next album that's coming up, you know, and what, whatever you're going to, uh, whatever you're going to do, you know, whatever grand project you're going to do, you know. And now I happen to be in, in two record releases, Flower Kings and of course Transatlantic that's coming up in February next year. So it's a great time, you know, it's, uh, it's a good time. Well, you know how they say finish finish one album and then start the next one, right? There's no yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy times. Yeah. yeah. So real quick, because you mentioned him earlier, and I know a lot of people always ask about him. How's uh, Thomas Bowden doing these days? 
Frankly, I have to say, and, and uh, you have to understand this uh, from, from the right point of view. I don't know what to say really, but we don't have much contact. Oh, you don't? Okay. No, we don't. We don't. And uh, he hasn't contacted me and I haven't contacted him, you know. So we, it sort of ended in a, in a, in a strange way. And I, I'm not here to, to tell any details or, or why things sure. turn out the way it, it did, you know. And, and, and I don't blame him, you know. It's, it's, it's just like, you know, sometimes you lose interest in, in, in or your interest to shift to somewhere else, you know. And, and I think for anyone to be in the Flower Kings, you got to have a commitment. And if the commitment isn't there, you know, or if your commitment is elsewhere, then, or your priorities, you know. For me, it's tough, you know, if I'm working on an album and someone is saying, oh, no, I, I can't do this right now because I'm working on something else. And, and you have to wait and you wait and you wait and nothing happens, you know, uh, then, uh, then it's obvious that maybe Flower Kings isn't the number one priority. And uh, I think it, it can be difficult, you know, in, in, in particular, if you're in a sort of a pressured by time or the record label is expecting uh, some kind of delivery at a certain time or but i think in general i think what happened is just that we worked for a very very long time and uh, it's sort of from falling in love we were falling out of love so to speak it happens right bands are just like relationships oh totally totally and and i mean there's i I mean, I wish him the best, you know, he has, he, he has a daytime job as a music teacher and he's, he's making good money. So I think he's in a good place now. And, and I think I just leave it at, at that. Yeah. I look back at the albums we did and, and I think he did great stuff when he was with well, the band, you know. But that's the way you have to look times. at it. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys did a lot yeah. of great stuff together, but like we said earlier, sometimes a door opens and one closes or one closes, another one opens and oh, totally. the new era of the Flower Kings is here and that's the way you have to look at it. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, Roy, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us here today uh, talking about this great yep. new album, Islands, and also a little kind of yep. sneak peek as to what we can expect from Transatlantic in 2021. So uh, yeah. everybody make sure you go out and get a copy of this album and be on the lookout for Transatlantic in 2021. Also visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. I wanna thank Roy Nestalt for joining us, spending some time. I am Pete Pardo. We'll see you all later on. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.